From the studios of Cheshire TV in Keene, New Hampshire, it's The Men's Room, a show by men, about men, and for everyone. Sponsored by the Monadnock Men's Resource Center and hosted by Damian Licata and for Seymour. Hello everyone and welcome back to The Men's Room. I'm Damian Licata, this is for Seymour, and we are your co-hosts for this next half an hour. That's right. That's yeah. right. We're brought to you by the Monadnock Men's Resource Center. Indeed we are, which also sponsors a drop-in support group for men in Keene at 25 Roxbury Street every Sunday night at 7. Come along or send the men in your life along. We'll talk more about that at the end of the show. We have a great right. guest. We have a great uh, really guest. honored yep. to have a guest from out of state right. guest right. to who join is, us today. Who is um, um, going to talk to us a little bit about the organization which was in many ways the inspiration for for our Ad Knock Men's right, Resource Center. Right. Yeah. But first, do we have we just have to touch uh, briefly on an item in the news? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, what we had talked about a, a little bit about this before uh, the camera started rolling here, yeah. and the, uh, we were talking about uh, Larry, Larry Craig. Larry Craig, yeah. Yeah. yeah who uh, from Idaho? Yes. Um, got the state right. Who right? And and he um, he has had a little trouble in his his in a men's room. As He's had, fact. yep, yeah. he has. And, and, uh, you know, it's an interesting, I think most people have heard about this. He was, um, he was involved, he got caught in a sting operation. Yeah. Um, and um, he was uh, um, caught soliciting, I believe, um, is what they yeah. would call it, um, mm -hmm. sex in a men's room. Yeah. Yeah, or right. he is accused. I mean, I guess he has, or he, ple he pleaded guilty, right, initially. So now he's trying to retract. Yeah, I don't think he's, I don't think he's denying, you know, that this occurred. Some, yeah. He's spinning I it. Yeah, though, I guess so. To, I guess so. You know, he was, he was, act, he had said he was, it was interesting, he had said he was going to resign. Right. And, or, and he was going to make an announcement about saying that he was going yeah. to resign. Mm -hmm. And then he subsequently said that it is his intention to resign. <laughs> and it turned <laughs> out that was, out of it? A, it turned out that was a very deliberate yeah. word because mm -hmm. uh, he had left a voicemail um, on the wrong person's f answering machine inadvertently. Um, in a long voicemail in which mm. he spelled out this, this sort of spin strategy. Uh, yeah. um, and he, that he fed, said, you know, I think I can get some, I, there are some allies out there that uh, yeah, are, yeah. are willing to go to bat for me. I don't think I want to lock myself into resigning just yet. Doesn't I think we'll say I intend. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem like many people in the Republican Party are that thrilled about having him around much longer. But it's, no. sa it's a sad thing. It's yeah. sad that, you know, that this was the way he felt he, where he needed to go to get uh, you know, attention, comfort, mm -hmm. you know, uh, closeness with other men, I guess. Yeah, know. I mean, I think, I mean, this raises so many questions, and mm -hmm. I actually want to give our, our, our guest an opportunity yes. when we to, sure. to chime in on this, but it's, there's, there are so many uh, questions about the larger context and context mm -hmm. in which something like this occurs, mm -hmm. you know, having to do with, with you know, what, what kinds of sexuality are, do we spend our time and money, right. you know, trying to control what, you know, why, why does, uh, you know, anyone have to go to a to men's room? To you know, why is that right. where the police go uh, yeah, to, yeah. you know, to conduct these operations? Right. And, and what does that say? I mean, if he wants to be with a man, he sh uh, you know, wouldn't it be nice if in the world he could just do that? He could just know? do that, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And, he's, and he's also saying now that this, he, he, he's frantically trying to assert that he's not gay. Right. This doesn't by any means mean that he's gay. And why is that so important that he say that? Right, he doesn't want that label. Yeah. 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 The behavior is... is is one thing, but right. to have that label is another thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It stirs up all sorts of interesting things, but let's it move does. on to our guest. Let's do that, yes. All right, so our guest tonight, uh, today, tonight, if you're watching this at 8.30 tonight, is um, Rob Oaken, who is the executive director of the Men's Resource Center for Change in Amherst, Mass. Uh, he's also the editor of the voicemail quarterly newsletter that they publish that we, we help distribute in this area, maybe you've seen around town. He's been involved in work, this work uh, for 15 years. He also has a psychotherapy practice in Amherst, Mass. And he writes op-ed pieces for the print and electronic media. And we're really glad to have you with us, Rob. Thank you very much. Welcome. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for joining us in the men's room. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So what do you make of all of this, this uh, uh, business with uh, Senator Craig? Well, you know, Senator Craig or Michael Vick, I think every day, if we're paying attention, we can uh, have opportunities to talk about what's happening with conventional masculinity and how we can shift that, which I think is the focus of uh, both of our organizations. Um, and Senator Craig is kind of trapped. He's trapped in being an old-style conventional man 
who obviously there's a part of him that never got to be realized. I mean, the rumors in Idaho and in Washington have been going on for 20 years that he was a closeted gay man. Mm -hmm. And instead of being able to find it inside of himself to take that courageous step to say to his wife and his family, I've been living a lie, this is who I am, and I need to liberate myself, mm -hmm. he's caught. And the society keeps all of us men in that grip. We're getting close to each other always, by society standards, means that we're gay. Mm -hmm. and that should be the last thing that we think about when we think about the opportunities of what it means to be intimate and close with a male friend, to have that kind of closeness. Mm -hmm. We know that we could be walking around, if we were in Italian and we were walking around the streets of Italy, we'd be holding hands, walking arm in arm, and no one would think anything of it, just mm -hmm. as women can do that in our culture. So mm -hmm. it's just one little window of how we as men are constrained. Mm -hmm. and the work that we're all doing is hoping, uh, is invested in, is uh, working so hard to reinvent what it means to be a man. Because, because I mean, we can see the chaos that uh, uh, Senator Craig has, has engendered in his own life and a lot of other people's lives, but, but the, um, in smaller ways, but also significant ways, you know, this box that so many men, all of us, find ourselves in or being pressed into creates all sorts of anguish. Mm -hmm. For, I mean, for me, you know, yep. when I experience that, yep. for all of us, yep. right. And, and you know, as you said, Rob, you know, this <coughs> is a, a lot of what um, the, the Manadnock Men's Resource Center and the uh, Men's Resource Center for Change is is about. So uh, I'd, I'd be, you know, it might be good to to you know let folks know a little bit about what your work has has been about and and how you've been working to sort of expand that box or eliminate it. Okay. I, you know, the, my own journey and the organization's journey are, um, I think, symbolic or emblematic of what's possible for us as men. I mean, the, the mission of the Men's Resource Center for Change is to support men, is to challenge men's violence, and to develop men's leadership to end oppression in ourselves, our families, and our communities. So it's a huge mission. It's a big lifetime mountain to be climbing. And for me, uh, one of the big portals of, of opening to look at this work was becoming a father. Mm -hmm. I know that it's not necessary for all men to open up to their true nature by being a dad, but certainly for those of us who are fathers, it's an incredible opportunity to do what? Well, to think about someone other than ourselves, to think about what it means to be nurturing and tender and to access those parts of ourselves that, again, the societal message is tough and strong and brave and you know, tender and nurturing are not words when we thumb through the, the thesaurus that we're gonna find. Right. Yet, why not? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I if you ask me, like, what's the goal of the organization, it's, you know, that in 20 years you could pick up, or in 10 years you could pick up a dictionary and see the words uh, nurture and, and nurturer or, t or tender in mm -hmm. a description of what it means to be manly. Mm -hmm. So we play out our work by uh, the supporting men piece is by offering uh, five different drop-in men's groups every week uh, down south in uh, Greenfield, in Northampton, and Amherst. Um, Three of them are just general issue, whatever's going on in your life, and two are specific to gay, bisexual, and questioning men, and Senator Craig, come on down. That's right. Uh, That's right. And another is specifically for men who've experienced some kind of neglect or abuse during their childhood, and they can determine what that means. Um, so that's one whole area of supporting men. And then we look at the, the violence piece by offering uh, batterers intervention groups, mm -hmm. state certified groups that help men who want to change from acting abusively to using some different strategies when they're feeling angry, when they're feeling upset. And we operate those all over uh, the four Western Mass counties from the Berkshires to almost to Worcester County, mm -hmm. into Worcester County and north and south from Springfield Mass up to Greenfield. Mm -hmm. um, and those are opportunities for men, both mandated by the court or 
nudged by a partner, a friend, a therapist, someone to look at these behaviors and to say, if I'm motivated, if I really don't want to be acting from an abusive um, place, then I can change. And we've got lots of tools. And I'm, I'm happy to say that the possibilities are so great for change that we have three men on our staff who are teaching, leading these groups who were formerly members of these yeah, groups many, wonderful. many years ago. Yeah. 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 So um, uh, on the subject of these better intervention uh, groups, they, they, they are informed by this, what we've been talking about, about these ideas about what it means to be a man, about masculinity. Uh, would you say that's different from uh, you know, other uh, programs that are aimed at these, this population? Yes, and I think that it would be a good thing uh, across the New England region and across the country if more batters intervention programs, m people working with uh, men who are uh, domestic violence uh, perpetrators, if they had uh, the, the consciousness of what it means to be a man, male socialization, because most of the, the models are mental health models. Mm -hmm. And of course there's a mental health component to this, but operating these groups out of a men's center where there's no excuse for the behavior. Absolutely, we make that uh, abundantly clear from day one. Mm -hmm. And we also help these men to deconstruct how they've been socialized so that they can see that the messages that they've been given about how they're supposed to be in charge, the king of the roost, and you know, mm -hmm. all of these messages have uh, constrained them so that they, the pressure that they feel to be the breadwinner, the provider, you know, that the burden that they carry is just, it's too much. And for those men who have that aha moment that, oh, I can really start to think about the definition of my uh, masculinity differently. Mm -hmm. I cannot feel threatened by my w wife or partner having a good paying job, maybe, God forbid, a job that pays more than, th than mine does, but is actually providing for our family in a better way. Mm. Oh wow, that burden, that my pack feels a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we bring that in. We talk about the privileges that we have as, as men, and we also help men to look at uh, some of the burdens of mm -hmm. those privileges. So we're talking about uh, 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 the, uh, oftentimes this, the, this loss of power or this sense of, of, of loss of power or, or, or status is, is often pointed to as one of the reasons for um, domestic violence or male violence, and um, and what I guess you're you're saying is that it's you're you, you're trying to shift the, these definitions, change these definitions for these men, so that they shouldn't be they shouldn't affect they shouldn't be affected by them. Exactly. I mean, uh, an example uh, I like to cite is if you ask uh, men in these groups or just men on the street or you know if if uh, viewers were calling up. T tell me what, what a definition of courage or what's an example of a courageous act and one of the easiest ones that comes up is the firefighter running into the building to save people. I mean that's that, you know, that's that message. Mm -hmm. Not many people say, uh, well, I was in a restaurant and I overheard uh, a man being verbally abusive to his partner mm -hmm. uh, or to, to a child or making a racist or sexist or homophobic comment, you know, in a mixed group. And I took a deep breath and I said, this is really hard, but I'm not going to feel good if I walk away and I just let my silence be mm -hmm. complicit to be colluding with this kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. And I stepped in and I challenged something respectfully and skillfully, but that's courage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's courageous. Aha. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So suddenly it's like, okay, we all know the other one, the physical act one, but this place for us as men moving from bystander to taking action mm -hmm. is a tremendous opportunity that we all have every day in, in little ways. Right. The relational act as opposed to a physical act. Right. 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 And, and I'm reminded when you talk about this, this is about men um, sort of calling other men on, on these issues and, and supporting other men to, to you know, think differently about these things. It has a certain weight to it, 
um, because it is another man, mm -hmm. I think, who's mm -hmm. talking about it. You know, I'm reminded of, and you've, you've brought this point, this analogy up before, too, of the civil rights movement, that very often um, racial prejudice and bigotry um, was um, challenged by um, other white privileged individuals. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. to simply have the oppressed group constantly um, complaining of, of their oppression doesn't have that kind of impact. Right. I mean, I think how, uh, f from our perspective, how the work of challenging men's violence, the battered women's movement, which, you know, opened up a huge portal of, of, of empowerment and transformation for women and took a situation that is still uh, of epidemic proportions nationally, internationally, and needs to be addressed every single moment, every dollar that could be put to, brought to bear to help um, protect women and, and our children, and at the same time, men who wanted to do good, who wanted to uh, be helpful, it wasn't ju enough to stand uh, with a candle as the Take Back the March, Take Back the Night March went on. It finally had to get to a place where we needed to do something. So a lot of men who got involved in the batter's intervention work said, okay, I'm a man, I'm going to be able to sit down in a room with other men and talk about this issue, mm -hmm. and I'm going to bring my own experience into the room. Because mm -hmm. as human beings, but particularly as men, I mean, we're hardwired to feel anger, irritation, frustration, and we always have choices as to how we're going to act. And for a man to say, uh, rather than lashing out, I took, and here again is that other, another definition right. of courage, courage. Right. I, I slipped on my shoes and I said, I'm taking a walk, I'm going to wait until I mm -hmm. calm down and then I'm going to mm -hmm. come back. Oh, you mean I could really dis- yeah. And s <laughs> in those groups to see the light bulb go on for these guys is, is yeah. clearly one of the brightest, ones, yeah. most amazing moments. And, and this, is what's, this is where supporting men is, is, is a part of it. I mean, I, you know, um, oftentimes we hear that, that well, you're, you're a men's organization, you know, you should be on our side, and yet you are critical of men, male behavior or, um, you know, critical of, of, of um, you know, various aspects of, of traditional masculinity. And you're, you're critical of me. That's not supportive. How do you respond to that? That's a really, I mean, that's really one of the issues that, um, men's organizations like ours have to address. And I think part of it is ask, you know, inviting more questions like, so what is your experience? Finding out more about the burden. That someone, when I hear that response, I know that this is someone who's uh, experiencing a lot of stress and, and distress in their life. And breaking out what, what are those places where, yeah, I don't understand how the world works. I don't understand why, you know, I have you know, women managers who are, you know, in charge of me. I, I just, mm -hmm. I feel uh, scared and frustrated and alone and, and confused. And so the default mechanism is to get big, to get loud, to, you know, mm -hmm. to roar. And then you guys come along and you're kind of, it seems like if I just look at it at the surface that you're actually siding with them, with them being, you know, the mm -hmm. women who are, you know, are, our adversary as if things are so, you know, either or, right. mm -hmm. this or that, which, you know, is a, a fault in, you know, the, right. the thinking constructs that we've all been socialized around. Mm -hmm. yep. But to, to be able to say, well, no, we're actually inviting our own uh, liberation um, by looking at how we were brought up and, and asking questions and changing things. Situation to situation, the language mm -hmm. that we use has to be really skillful. I wouldn't necessarily sit with that guy and talk about men's liberation because that's <laughs> not necessarily going to invite him in as much right. as like, well, tell me how it felt when your wife or partner came home and said, I got a promotion and here's how much I'm earning and you realize that she now is earning more. Yeah. How did that feel? Mm -hmm. right. And then let's, let's go from there so that you can actually feel good about what it means for the family as opposed to having your own pride be what wounded. What it says about you as a man. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, you know, I, I, it's, it's so interesting to think about the courage that it takes to do that, what you're just describing there, to, to, to shift your thinking, the courage it takes to, um, to challenge other men. And I, I'm, it makes me think about, about you and the courage, uh, your courage, to continue to do this work, to continue to do this work. And I'm wondering how, 
I mean, like, why? You know, what is it that, that mm. inspires you? I mean, I, can, I think I maybe know some answers just on how, you know, how excited you are about some of the things you're talking about, but I'm curious how you think about it. Like, why do you, it's been 15 years, mm -hmm. you know, why not take a break? <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, Maybe I'm you're going to. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Well, <laughs> well uh, you know what? What keeps me uh, engaged in this work? It's really a continuation of the kind of social change consciousness that uh, came to me in my late teens and in the uh, anti-war movement, in particular, in the beginnings of the uh, women's movement and the. T you know, tail end of the most active part of the civil rights movement and the rise of the gay rights movement, that the light bulb really went on for me that this is part of the social change puzzle that I want to solve, that so many of the other issues uh, mm -hmm. have been, um, have been, uh, have had a, as a deficit some of the conventional plotting old style male behavior, that, that stubbornness. And when I had my own awakening, and I think, as I said, you know, becoming a dad really uh, contributed greatly to that. I, my, some of my early uh, radio commentaries were about my experiences as being a father mm -hmm. and accessing that part of me. And then seeing my, my kids grow up and, you know, having a, a, a son who, you know, is uh, in college now, he's the youngest, and made sure that that seat stayed down in every bathroom in the house <laughs> and, you know, three uh, feminist daughters who, you know, one's right now as we speak is in India working on a film and another is, lives in New Orleans and moved down there to help after Katrina and another's uh, going to be a nurse practitioner and is in nursing school, that they're not feeling any of the limits that mm. women might have felt. So I, I feel like for me, the women's movement opened up a doorway that was wide enough for me to walk through mm -hmm. so that I could uh, learn from their experiences of saying enough, I need to fr free myself from the constraints that I've gone through. And there's no reason that we as men can't apply those lessons to our own lives. Yeah, yeah. And that's still, I mean, I can, I, and I can see how sort of the, having done this work for what is essentially a generation, 15 years, you know, that you can see, at least in your own children and probably elsewhere, the payoff, you know, that there are these, there are here are these young people who have grown up in a world, a household and a world that's different than it was 20 or more years ago. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And, and, I, and I think that in terms of how do we, uh, as organizations, you know, in Keene or in Amherst or the uh, the reach that we try to have with um, printing, you know, thousands of copies of the voicemail magazine and putting these op-eds out into the world. We need to engage nationally this conversation about men and masculinity, and we need to challenge uh, the political uh, campaigns that try to denigrate any sort of soft, sensitive side of men. I think that right now in the presidential campaign, um, you know, John Edwards has been feminized, that he's yeah. too soft. And I think one of the struggles that Barack Obama is facing is uh, he could be portrayed that way. And he's swinging, I don't think, uh, to his best uh, service, swinging the other way, talking a little tougher about how mm -hmm. we go into countries, that it's enough. John Kerry made that mistake. He didn't have anything to prove in 2004 that in the national c political conversation about men, uh, we need to invite in this kind of softer, sensitive side as part of what it really means to be a man. We're down to our last uh, five minutes. Yes, indeed. Um, I, um, we do want to um, mention again um, the voicemail, mm -hmm. which you had, you had alluded to. Um, these magazines here, maybe the camera can get a, a shot of, uh, of one of these. Um, we distribute these also on behalf of, uh, of the uh, MRCC up in this area, so you've probably seen them around um, and hope you continue to look for them. Really um, a, a, a fascinating read on in, yeah. in every issue. There's yeah. always something in there that I find really compelling. Yeah. And, uh, um, and it's a good way to, as you say, broaden this conversation. Yeah, yeah. There, was a w there was one, uh, maybe the most recent, that had the cover story on pornography. 
Right. And the, mm -hmm. uh, I have to tell you, those went really fast from mm -hmm. the newsstands that we are, the news baskets yep. that we put those yep. in. Mm -hmm. They did. Yeah. yeah. So. But that's, it's really, really thought-provoking stuff. And then also, the, uh, if the camera's still down there, there's a, an ad campaign that you have run periodically. We've, we've done it up here, too. Mm -hmm. um, is that it, still, are you still doing that? It, from time to time, I think it's really an important way to engage the community in mm -hmm. some of these issues. Uh, why should we just allow the uh, greeting card and the uh, candy industry to take Valentine's Day and put it into this narrow. Mm -hmm. Why can't we look at Valentine's Day as maybe being about healthy relationships and how can we uh, participate in that? So mm -hmm. in that particular case, um, the idea of men making a statement about uh, what it means to be respectful in relationships and in mm -hmm. dating. So yeah, th there's so many ways that we can uh, get our voice into that conversation and I really invite uh, particularly college-age young men and, uh, and older men who are mentors or coaches to be thinking about these issues. There's wonderful PSAs that other organizations that we're connected with. Mm -hmm. People can certainly check out our website if I can yes, share that. No, it's no. uh, www.mrcforchange.org and I write a monthly web editorial mm -hmm. that takes on you know, different issues. There's all of our programs and services. There's yeah. ways to subscribe to voicemail if you're not able to see it all the time up here. Yeah. Um, so and we just really want to encourage people to take advantages of what the Monadnock Men's Resource Center is doing to uh, invite men to the support groups and to be thinking about these issues and making mm -hmm. it just part of the fabric of our lives. That's great. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure, and I hope we can do it again. Yeah, sometime. yeah, we'll have yeah, you back in. Love to. Sure. So we got uh, interesting. Two less than two minutes. Less than two minutes. Two. So blurb. So go, go. Ready talk go. quickly about. We invite you once again to our uh, right here in uh, in Keene uh, support group, open support group for men, all mm -hmm. men, and it's a general support group. We talk about whatever the men bring that that okay. evening. Every Sunday night at seven o'clock. 25 Roxbury Street in the Life Art Building, right next to Obashan's yep. Hardware. Arrive a few minutes before 7, last about two hours. Um, you don't have to talk. You just sit and listen. Some guys do. They just yep. come and sit. and you know, It's always facilitated by a couple of trained volunteers. And it's uh, you know, a safe, comfortable place to sit and right. talk or listen. That's so. right. So we hope to see you there. Yep. Thanks for joining us in the men's room. We'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. See you next week. You've been watching The Men's Room, sponsored by the Monadnock Men's Resource Center and hosted by Damian Licata, co-director of the MMRC and executive director of the Granite State Monarchs, and Forrest Seymour, co-director of the MMRC and a therapist in private practice in Keene. You can learn more about the Monadnock Men's Resource Center, see past shows online, and find our Cheshire TV schedule at mmrconline.org. And thanks for joining us in The Men's Room. <laughs>